Welcome back. Now, South Africa has slipped to 83rd out of 180 countries in the 2023 Transparency International Corruption Perceptions Index. The CPI evaluates state corruption worldwide and in the latest annual print, South Africa's ranking has worsened by 11 spots. And joining us now to provide insight into this decline and help us review corruption trends over recent years is Executive Director at Corruption Watch, Karam Singh. Thank you so much. For your time, uh, Karam, now it seems that South Africa isn't the only country that has actually uh, declined. It seems that corruption has uh, gotten worse uh, globally. But of course, we're zooming into South Africa. And I just want to know, I mean, with this decline that we're seeing, have criminals just gotten bolder and our accountability systems weaker? Yes. Um, you know, I mean, it is very, quite distressing to see, you know, despite all the efforts that are being made, that the perception is that we still not winning the fight against corruption in fact that we might be actually going backwards and i think part of what your question speaks to is this issue of uh, impunity and a kind of uh you know brazenness by which we see organized crime operating in south africa often in collusion you know with politicians and public sector officials um it's just uh, we had an era of state capture we had a, a long commission of inquiry with lots of uh, recommendations following its report but despite that we still see a kind of entrenched uh you know criminal syndicate activity that's dominating key sectors of our economy yeah and actually i was going to talk about that uh, you know how pervasive is criminality within the legal systems that are supposed to be protecting the public purse I, I think it, it, it's highly pervasive across the public sector. Um, you know, uh, we, you know, the big looting that we saw during state capture was largely with regard to state-owned enterprises. But we mm -hmm. see vulnerabilities within uh, national government, provincial government, and local government, particularly in uh, a public, you know, procurement departments. In terms of the uh, criminal justice system, we know that it was severely weakened in the era of state capture. And although they've enrolled some serious high profile state capture cases up to this point, they've uh, been unable to successfully prosecute any of those cases. So those cases are still in the system. But we know that our criminal justice system is also uh, battling to have the capacity and the expertise to, to fully uh, uh, realize its mandate. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about the independence of these institutions that are supposed to keep government officials accountable. Are they independent enough? I don't think certainly not. Uh, you know, we don't have an independent uh, 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 police service. In terms of the prosecution services, they are meant to be independent, but we know that the MPA still has a uh, you know, structural and operational dependencies in terms of, uh, you know, how it receives its budget, in terms of its, uh, how it reports to parliament, you know, it's still very much under uh, the Department of Justice. And I think there could be, uh, uh, you know, one of the things we would look to see in the period coming up is greater independence for the MPA. But ultimately, that independence has to be supported by uh, uh, financial commitments to ensure that uh, it has a sufficient budget allocation to be able to bring in the expertise it needs to do to prosecute uh, corruption cases. So, um, yeah, you know, this issue of independence and capacity is also directly related to the issue of funding. Yeah, it seems like a lot, a lot needs to be done and a concerted effort needs to be made to pull these institutions away from the groups of government uh, influence and power. Now, a significant part of the world is going to the polls this year. Has the upcoming election season uh, not been enough of a reason to put a halt on corruption? Or is there a perception that voters have become so desensitized to corruption that maybe it's low on the list of uh, the, the factors that voters have in their decision making during election season? Well, I think I think corruption will be in the forefront of, of voters' minds uh, when they think about uh, uh, how they cast their their, their ballot. Um, you know, the the existing governing party it does not have a good record in terms of uh, you know consistent, uh, uh, dedicated, courageous fight against corruption, and I think. That will no doubt work against the governing party and people's people's conception. So I, I do expect a, a, a corruption to be a real hot ticket issue during this election, not only in South Africa, but in, in, in many of the other jurisdictions around the world where elections will be taking place this year.
And I mean, Karam, just what uh, stands out when looking at the impact of corruption on the population? I mean, I think critically in, in our country, we have a situation where we have an economy which is stagnant, which hasn't been growing for, 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 for years. We have one of the most unequal societies, which is a, a direct legacy of, of the apartheid era. And, you know, corruption basically, you know, becomes a kind of handbrake on development, on, on it pursuing uh, a democrat democratic economic growth a broad based empowerment it really uh, 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 you know inhibits all of that and really makes it difficult to to uh, uh, you know create a more equitable society so ultimately it's the poorest of the poor who suffer because of lack of service delivery directly as a result of uh, uh, corruption bribery and and the kind of cronyism particularly at, as, as we see it at local government yeah just as we wrap up the conversation i mean we've seen uh, the numbers and the scores in this uh, perceptions uh, index and i'm wondering if the world of corruption uh, is bigger than what these scores suggest no absolutely i mean these scores are are, are it's a perceptions index uh, it's you know taken from different think tanks and different business people, but we know uh, you know in terms of illicit financial flows, in terms of money laundering, that annually we're talking about billions and billions of dollars, dollar you know money that's flowing away from de the developing world into various uh, uh, you know offshore destinations into private hands. So absolutely, you know the power, the 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 the, the, the phenomenon and the challenge of corruption you know, ultimately supersedes what can be measured uh, in these types of indices and surveys. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and unpacking that for us, Karam. Really appreciate it. Uh, that was Executive Director at Corruption Watch, Karam Singh.